here in the AT&T studio with uh, special guests from Firekeepers Casino. And I wish, I know you can get pictures on television and you can get sound on the radio. We don't have it figured out yet where you can get aroma, but that's what we have here in our studio this morning because it has become a kitchen, if you will, all uh, all across the uh, table here. And uh, mm -hmm. Chef Michael McFarland is the head chef. Is that what it's called, head chef, executive chef? Executive chef. Yeah. Executive chef at Firekeepers uh, Casino. And you brought with you Jonathan Williams, who is the uh, a sous he's, chef? He's the head chef. He's the head chef. Yep. Executive head chef. Yep. Welcome, and thanks for being here so early. Thank you. Good morning. I know chefs uh, work very often late into the night. And so to come early like this is very nice of you. Appreciate it very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We love coming down here. You have a new toy at Firekeepers now. We do. We have a couple of them. <laughs> we have uh, banquets and we have a new restaurant, Smoke and Fire, with the with the new hotel. So the hotel opened up on twelve twelve twelve, and Smoke and Fire is the uh, is the restaurant in the hotel. Yep. And if of course you go to the casino, you can go to that restaurant too. You don't have to be staying at the hotel in order to frequent it. Absolutely. Smoke and Fire. That's a great name. You like a restaurant. It? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. What's it all about? Well, of course, the place called Firekeepers, so there's a little bit of the theme mm -hmm. there, right? A little bit of that tied into it. It's uh, it's got barbecue undertones. We've got brisket. We've got pulled pork, and then we've got some uh, some regular fare. But we're trying to do mm -hmm. a different spin. Like the chicken dish we have is 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 kind of like a beer can chicken. It cooks on a uh, a nice little ceramic. Uh, steamer that we put aromatics in the bottom so the chicken kind of sits on that mm. roasts steams you know combi cooks and and it the the menu is very diverse and it, its roots are in, in definitely in barbecue where did you get you know the barbecue seems to be very fashionable now very fashionable and it's different depending where you go in the country it's not all the same right uh, if you go to uh, slows in downtown detroit it's different than something in austin texas is different than something in but where did you get the uh, the inspiration for this? Well, I think we we looked at what we didn't have. We looked in the area uh, and and it didn't really see anything that that would directly compete with us. You know, maybe a missing element in the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And then we just started experimenting in the kitchen. We pulled some from Memphis. We pulled some from you know the deeper south. We pulled some from um, what the, what like slow, slow style is much different. We did some dry rub. We did some some mop ribs. So we've got a bunch of different styles of barbecue. So it's kind of a little kaleidoscope of style um so okay so it's a, a hybrid your own it's mcfarland barbecue yeah it's with mcfarland williams <laughs> and actually we you know we have a really good team so it was a big collaboration we had a ton of people involved and th there's probably 20 different people that have something on that menu that they were involved in so it, it's kind of a good accomplishment for the whole team any feedback so far the feedback on the food and the service has been excellent mm -hmm. um, i'm not just saying that on the radio <laughs> do you have anything to do with the design of the restaurant? To the, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? In other words, if it's going to be barbecue, do you design it a certain way, or do you design it first and then decide the food? In a perfect world, you would design the kitchen around the cuisine to a degree, but you have, you have to figure ten, 10 years down the road, it could be Something an else. oyster bar, mm -hmm. you know, just depending on how, you know, trends evolve and, and things like that. But we were intimately involved in the design of the kitchen, and... The front of the house, not as much. That was done with the architect, but we went for the banquet kitchen and the back of Smoke and Fire. We, we pretty much did it all. People, when they are cooking their Christmas dinner, uh, i, I got to believe it's quite varied. Probably some people have ham or turkey or roast beef. Lasagna. Or, do they? The Italians have lasagna for Christmas. It's one of the dishes. My wife cooks that. <laughs> <laughs> My wife cooks this spaghetti and uh, meat, meatballs and mm. uh, sausage and everything because she's Italian. And then like people come from miles around for it. So that's their niche, too. I mean, they're, they're the Tanaglia family, and, and uh, it's just, like, delicious stuff. But um, you have to cook for such varying tastes. You have people who walk into your restaurants and say, I like this, I don't like that, I want this, I don't. It's, it's astonishing that you can even do it, really. Well, I mean, the difficult portion of Smoke and Fire is there's a lot of subjective cuisine on there. You know, my mother made it this way, or, you know, the same thing with meatloaf. You know, if you've had meatloaf, grew, grew up with it, stroganoff, some of those comfort foods... It, it's never going to be exactly how, mm -hmm. you know, you grew up with it. So it, it is a challenge at times. Like I said, with this stuff here, we've had really, really positive feedback. The pressure is on sometimes, too, you know, at Christmas when you're having everyone over and you want everything to come out perfectly. And I don't even know how the average person gets everything to be hot at the same time because you're talking about corn and potatoes and stuffing, and just, you know, what is it, cranberry and all the rest of it. But uh, how, any tips for someone at home who's trying to put on a good dinner? Well, I mean, do as much as you can ahead of time, you know. Uh, Three days out, you can do a lot of marinades. You can do a lot of chopping oh. and, and mm -hmm. prepping, and then 
leave as little as you can for the day. You know, roasting meats, you can get them on early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, like what your wife does, probably that pasta bake yeah. can be prepped the night before. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure it goes in in the morning oh, at a yeah. low temperature, lets it go all day. Mm -hmm. So really, it's just the timing of, of everything coming out at the end. And if, and if you've got maybe 60, 70% of it done, then it's just those seven dishes or so that just boom, boom, boom. Don't forget dessert. Um, we'll have a little taste test then of uh, these dishes that are, I wish you could all, well, you can all do it. You don't have to be here in the studio with us. Just go to Fire Keeper, Smoke and Fire in the lobby of the new hotel. By the way, you can valet park right at the hotel, walk right in, and the restaurant is right there to the left and the casino is to the right. So it's very convenient. And I suppose if you open up those, those valet doors, the aroma from Smoke and Fire might just make it to the parking lot <laughs> and pull you in there. We will be back with Executive Chef Michael McFarland from Firekeepers Casino and Head Chef Jonathan Williams. Donna Barbera is here. I'm Michael Patrick Shields.